Hello, my beloveds. How are you? I am so incredibly excited to be here. I'm here with Matthew Kenny. You are entrepreneur extraordinary, but you're also a really extraordinary person. Besides being my very, very dear friend who I adore, I have such massive respect for you. Oh, thank you. As a, as a human being, as a person who's seen a vision and then created it, your courage. You have incredible courage to me. The way you have seen what you want to do and that you've gone after it is really, it's incredible. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And yeah. Well, it's, I'm lucky to be able to do this work, to be surrounded by beautiful food and yeah. gardens and passionate people and, you know, guests who, like, want to put this healthy foods in their body. So it's, it gives back a lot as well. It's true. We're at this beautiful restaurant, Plant Food and Wine, which is absolutely my favorite restaurant on the whole planet. And this garden is exquisite. Like, literally, we were sitting here going, can you feel the energy? Like... I can feel the love you put into this restaurant. Well, people love when they're here. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, um, it's got a special you know charm to it. Um, you know because we're growing things, we're working with plants. Everything's alive. Right. The communication with our guests is is always very warm and friendly. A responsibility to really you yeah, know, you, you bring the best <laughs> all the time. Yeah. All the time. So uh, first thing I want um, my audience to know is that so first of all you're a culinary chef as a trained um, culinary chef, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So why raw vegan? I was always into health, but in my generation growing up, <clears throat> teenager, healthy didn't mean vegan. Right. What did healthy mean to you growing up, I'm curious? It was what they call paleo now, lean protein and, right. and a lot of vegetables and not too much sugar and not too many carbs. It was the best we could do at that time. Right. But I noticed over time, the more vegetable-centric I became, uh -huh. the better I felt, the more grounded I felt, and I also have a love for animals and wildlife, so it, it took me many, many years because I wasn't brought up this way, but when I finally, like, tried it, tried living a completely plant-based lifestyle, like, it was, it was done. I was like, right, you're this like, is my path. Yeah. Going raw vegan isn't just about our own health. It's about the health of our planet. It's about the health of our animal brothers and sisters. Also, the access we have to greater intuition, greater balance, greater mental acuity is outstanding. And for all those reasons, yes, Matthew, I agree with you, all wonderful reasons to go plant-based raw vegan. And so what are the biggest benefits you've noticed from being raw vegan? And because you, you, I mean, look at him, how young you look. So besides looking so incredible, what, 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 how are the biggest benefits you have noticed in being raw vegan? Well, I actually think the biggest benefit for me was not necessarily rela related to just the vegan aspect. It's the alignment, you know, between connection to the planet, do, knowing that everything you're doing is promoting health for the environment, for the animals, for, for people, and also the creative outlet. So like having all these like positive things flowing right. is tremendously, but of course, like the enzymes and the nutrition and the density of nutrition is amazing. I mean, Did you notice intuitively as well? Did you notice an opening yeah. intuitively? Yeah, for sure. It yeah. was very quick. I mean, yeah. I, I felt the change immediately. It was a big transition. So you just reworked the way you create food. I spent a year just experimenting, had my dehydrators going, my blenders going, fermenting things. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, what would you tell my beautiful audience? A lot of them are beginning to be vegan. They're mm -hmm. kind of moving more towards a plant-based diet. What would you tell them that would be helpful steps in moving in that direction? Um, I mean, I tell everybody, you know, if they're not vegan or they, they're curious, try it one day oh, or try okay. it for a week or incorporate. You just do it at breakfast, but just commit to something, right. even small. And, and just listen, you know, listen to how it feels, how it tastes, how you, you know, what the, how you feel the next day. And the rest kind of takes care of itself as long as we go into it open-minded and really, like, aware. What would you tell somebody who sees that they have some kind of vision, they may not even know what it is, on how to pursue their visions and their dreams for their life? I thought about what is everything that I'd want to do. And I was able to put that all into one path, like, I, you know, restaurants, products, writing, maybe some sustainable fashion. And I love the, having a global network of businesses, so I thought these are all the things I could ever possibly want to do. Because for me, it's important that I have 100% alignment, so all my work is in this company, right. in this brand. And so then I had to create a road of possibilities. Right. That's my view of possibilities. And stay, you know, just 
every day, one step forward, like with each of that. And some days you don't make progress, but you might get more organized, or you right. might learn a new dish. You know, your business might go flat that day, or it might even go back a couple steps. But use that pause to find a new technique, become a better communicator. So it's you know it's just like a day at a time, hour at a time, a minute at a time. Sometimes. I loved what he was saying about when you have a vision and a goal. You set that as your north star, and you move towards that. You may not always go that far each day, but it's what we do in the long run. And every little baby step along the way, that gets us there. So for all of you, my beloveds, if you have a vision and dream in your heart that's singing to you, that you're learning to do, set the big picture. What is it you want to create? And then every day, take steps in that direction to get you there. And I promise you, cross my heart, you will get there. Some days we feel like we're moving a lot, some days we don't, but here's the deal. If I know that I have my goal, where I'm going and my vision, if I take steps in the direction of where I'm going, every night when I go to sleep, I feel good that I've moved forward in my business, in my dreams and goals and purpose for my life. Tell us all the different um, all the different ventures that you have where people can come and just taste your delicious, incredible food and yeah. be nourished by you. Well, here in L.A., we have, of course, Plant Food and Wine, and we have the deli just opened. It's like a, it's really a convenience store. We have some paninis, and you can buy, like, kombucha, green juice, sustainable wine. Like, it's a, it's a, wow. it's like a convenience store, but it's all thoughtful. Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I really am holding that vision for you. That's genius. <laughs> and then we're opening Double Zero, our, our vegan pizza restaurant here in Venice. Oh, I didn't um, know about that. That will be open in the fall. And then we have another 20 restaurants. There's several in New York, right. Miami, London. Uh, we're opening in Chicago, Boston, um, Philadelphia. Is there anything else you would like to tell them? Anything well, else? I mean, I'm really focused... I do the restaurants and they're fun and artistic, mm -hmm. but I'm really focused on a lot of projects that bring healthier alternatives to larger numbers of people. Oh, like so that. one of our, I'll just mention two of our projects because we have many. We have a few product lines in development, but we're doing um, one brand that's uh, going to distribute um, frozen yeah. food nationwide to all the major uh, markets. Can't really talk about the name yet. It's a surprise, but we're going to announce on August 19th. And then we have Plant Minded, which is an institutional food service business, which will serve schools, hospitals, and universities. Um, oh my God. That will be distributed through large-scale food providers in that institutional space. Um, it's so necessary. Wow, that's amazing. One more thing. I remember hearing an interview. You were interviewed, I think it was by Patrol, who I adore. And uh, you were talking about when you first, you were working someplace, you were working at Christie's, you got a crazy yeah. job at Christie's back in New York, and something, you walked past the restaurant every single day, and something told you to go in there, and that's how you really got your opening. Do you, was it an intuitive thing? Like, was there really something like a call that you heard that you followed, would you say? And if so, what would you tell people when they hear that, that got, like a certain call or an intuitive pull to do something that they love? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I didn't. It was just, I guess it was intuition. There was something about the design of this place. And, you know, I always loved restaurants even before I was a chef. Oh, you did? I didn't want to be a chef. That wasn't my, it's not that I didn't want to. I just never thought of it. But I love design. I love, like, the whole theater of servers moving around and food coming out of the kitchen and music playing. It's like, I always loved to dine out. Right. And this place just had all the components that I liked. They, the menu was very exotic Mediterranean. The design was really cool. The uniforms were cool. It was a good location and just... I had to see this place every day. It was pretty funny. Wow. And yeah. the guy, that's how the guy gave you the chance, right? That uh, was your yeah, opening. manager saw me and he recognized that I was always looking in and asked if I wanted a job. So he hired me. <gasps> right on the spot. Pretty much. Wow. And that started this whole thing. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Matthew, I completely agree with what you're saying on this side. I know firsthand because I had to take a huge risk when I left being a doctor to pursue my passion and my vision and dream for my life. Intuition plays such a powerful part. And my beloveds, I want you guys to know, intuition usually comes as a whisper. It's a little guidance. It's, it's turn left, turn right, go straight. It's subtle and we have to be so clear in our body and we have to be clean and we have to be aware and conscious all the time so we can hear the whispers of our heart, soul, and spirit guiding us in the right direction. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for my sharing. Pleasure. I really appreciate it. So if you guys are in LA, 
please come visit Matthew at Plant Food and Wine or else double zero coming this fall. Yeah, sometime in the fall. Okay, and also Make Out in Culver City. Mm -hmm. And then what's the name of the, the convenience store? Uh, New Delhi. New Delhi, okay. You have four choices here in LA. Come here, this is just, this is magical here. <laughs> All right, my beloveds, I hope you enjoyed our video today. And I really hope you enjoyed my interview with Matthew Kenny. He's extraordinary. Make sure you check him out. I'm gonna leave his information right here. And also, you guys know the drill like subscribe and share my youtube channel and don't forget the little ding -a -ling -a -ling <laughs> notification bell and if you haven't already head on over to my website drelizabeth.com put it right here and check out my latest program it's a seven day reset program thank you so much for all of you who've checked it out already a lot of you guys are loving it and getting massive results which makes my heart so happy to hear so all right my beloved until next time really stay tuned because we are working on some really, really cool surprise videos, amazing adventures, and some new stuff that I think you guys are absolutely going to love. And so until next week, you guys know I love you to infinity and back, and happy speedy dipping in the fountain of youth. Ciao!